Walking is by definition the ability to move at a regular pace by lifting and setting down each foot in turn. Now what if we decided to do that for the whole game? I'm Pants, and I recently did a poll on which challenge run you guys wanted me to do. And by a landslide, you guys want to see me beat Elden Ring while only walking. But what does only walking actually mean? Well, Elden Ring has three types of movement speeds. We have the sprint, the jog, and the walk. For a walk to be counted as a walk, at least one foot has to be left on the ground at all times. So if we look at the run, and the jog, at some point during the animation, both our feet are in the air, which is what differentiates these two movements from the walk. Now the walk is an animation, so anything to change that animation would be considered not walking. So we can use this logic for other forms of movement, such as rolling, backstepping, climbing up ladders, getting hit by enemies, attacking, backstabs, Opening chest, ashes of war, some sorceries, and a majority of incantations. So basically, if my legs don't look like this while I'm performing an attack, then technically I'm not walking. And also the term only walking means we can't ever stop. At no point during this run am I allowed to stop walking. And more specifically, I can't do actions which force my character to stop in place or do an animation that puts my character at a hold. So while technically I can purchase items and upgrade them at the blacksmith, since the game never pauses and my character can continue to walk while I make the transaction, I can't level up. Since in order to level up in Elden Ring, we have to press a button at our side of grace, and this button forces us into a little animation here where we sit down and rest. Now I don't know about you, but that doesn't look like walking to me. So yeah, it's not allowed this run. However, there are points in the game, like me walking into a fog gate, opening doors, falling down, and looking at the map, which is necessary in order for me to complete the game. And such points exist for resting at a side of grace. There's this one, this one, and this one. Now if by chance I happen to have runes on hands or golden seeds to convert, I can use these three opportunities to do that. Once I leave that side of grace, it's back to walking and I can't rest at that side of grace ever again. So we have to be extremely careful with how we use these three graces and make sure we level up enough before the final boss. Now there is a lot more to explain on the restrictions of this run, but I'll do that while going over the actual run. So let's do that. So first things first, we need to choose a class. Now I'm going to choose the hero class because of the Ash of War of Wild Strikes. Now I know I said Ash of Wars caused me to get out of my walking animation, but this one is different. This Ash of War allows us to continuously move in a walking animation, although it looks really weird, while we do wild strikes in the process. And it doesn't cost that much FP. Now I'm gonna name this character after a recent subscriber. Congrats Reese's. Now we spawn in, and slowly walk our way to the tutorial boss, for him to yet again throw us into another grave pit. Now we can get out of the tutorial and attempt to not attract the tree sentinel's attention. No, 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 stop, stop it, stop, no, no, attack! You can imagine how this went. Never mind and then make our way to the Church of El. And just letting you know, I am allowing myself to light these Sites of Graces, just not rest at them. Because if not, this would be literal hell. Sticking true to the challenge, I also have given myself 20,000 poise. 
And this is so that enemies can't stun me, which would cause me to get out of my walking animation. And as we know, I'm trying not to get out of my walking animation for the majority of this run. So from the Church of L, we can test our wild strikes on these Godric soldiers, and test the damage capabilities when we run out of FP. And 15 damage is not a lot, so let's keep a note to always have FP on hand. Now from here, I want to acquire the Brass Shield from one of the soldiers in the base camp, since I need a shield with a no skill Ash of War in order to continue to use Wild Strikes. The shield we spawned in with has a parry Ash of War, which I can't use since it makes me stop in place. To top it off, the Brass Shield is probably one of the best shields you can have early in the game, and with a 0.8% drop rate, I routed killing the Godric soldiers over and over again, then repeatedly dying and spawning at the stake of Merica until I eventually got the drop. Yes, I got it! Now with the Brass Shield, we can block and use Wild Strikes anytime we desire. Next, I went to the Limgrave Tunnel to grab a few smithing stones. Then I teleported back to the Church of El to upgrade my axe to plus two, the reason being so that we can go and navigate to the Waypoint Ruins, and then face this Pumpkin Head boss. Luckily, at our current state of affairs, we can just tank the damage and kill him quite easily. This unlocks a Side of Grace and a Sorcerer I call Stonehead. From Stonehead, we can buy three spells that we can actually use. Glenstone Pebble, Glenstone Arc, and Glenstone Stars. However, we don't have enough intelligence to use these yet. And if you were observative through this purchase, you would notice I have quite a bit of ruins for someone who died several times already. And you would be right about your suspicions, since I had a script in the background that prevents my runes from dropping when I die. And this is only for convenience, because I can only level up three times and I'd prefer not to rune farm for the whole video. Now after getting these sorceries, I have a mission to go on, to collect every golden seed and sacred tier possible before I rest at the first sight of grace. So first things first, I headed to the Weeping Peninsula, where at least I tried. Damn, bro! Okay! This is the only entrance to the Weeping Peninsula, and it seems impossible for us to get through. So I had to skip going to the Peninsula altogether, and made my way over to the Side of Grace near the Mist Woods, where I killed this noble bastard for a golden seed, and then made my way over to the Church of Merica, where we can grab our wondrous physic, not physique, I have learned, and a sacred tear. And no, I'm not allowed to use these teleporters. After this, I headed to the Shifa River, making sure to continuously move while going down this long ass elevator, and then meet this crab along the way, which I almost died to. No! But was able to outsmart by waiting for him to use his bubble attack, then striking him down with a few blows. Get outplayed, crab! I honestly didn't think I can get through most of this area because of these lightning ball things, but besides the one guy who I had to play Ring Around the Rosy with, I was able to make it to the Second Grace at the Shifa River, then navigate myself through these stomping barbarians and rough terrains, where I finally made it to the Golden Seed I needed. Only like 8 or 9 more to go. Next Golden Seed is back up this elevator, where we can navigate through this bear infested forest, and grab this grace near Fort Hate, where we can slowly make our way up this arrow trap which isn't targeting us because we have demi-humans as meat shields. Thank you for your service. Now we can walk right past these Godric soldiers to grab yet another golden seed. Now after this I headed back to the Third Church America Grace and gruelingly made my way up this zigzag mountain where I encountered a rolling troll. With the use of this godlike shield, I was able to block most of his hits and only attack when necessary, which allowed me to come out this fight victorious. After this, it was back to climbing the mountain and heading towards Kaelid. See, I pronounced it right. Where I'm intentionally avoiding the Church America here because I don't want to get softlocked with a red invader. And there's another side of grace nearby. Now if anybody's ever been to Kaelid, you know it's filled with a psychopath's messed up science projects. Like what the hell even is that? Oh my god! Oh! 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 So as you can imagine... Oh! Thunder thighs! Ah! Walking through this area was pretty tough. But I'm a pretty tough guy. You can tell by how big my chest is. First challenge was trying to get past the army of dogs blocking my way. Easiest solution was falling off this section here. Then I had to make my way past a bunch of enemies on this beaten path, and walk past this dragon boy I killed last video, who is currently going 
Me, 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 me. After passing him, we have a straight shot to the Golden Seed. And death. Oh my god! No! 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 I have to walk all the way back! Usually I wouldn't care so much about dying, but in this run it means I have to spend 10 minutes walking back to the area it would usually take you 10 seconds to get to. God damn it! No, 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 no! No! Once I get past this obstacle and reach the side of grace, I'm faced with yet another challenging obstacle. Which is, how the hell am I supposed to make it past this troll boulder bullshit? I mean, I tried hugging the wall, I tried going further around him, I even waited for him to stop pelting pots at me, and made it a distance before he just killed me right before I reached the gates. No! No! I felt like I tried everything to get this golden seed behind this gateway. But then I remembered there's a way into town of Celia without me having to deal with this stupid troll. And it's through the Swamp of Eonia. But the problem with the Swamp of Eonia is it's filled with Scarlet Rot buildup. And I have very little health and tears to deal with this kind of stuff right now. But there are little rocks and mushroom pads that I can lay my little feet on for the Scarlet Rot buildup to tick down. And I have nothing but time on my hands to wait for this Scarlet Rot to tick down. So through a few trial and error attempts, I discovered a way around the backside of the swamp to this side of Grace. Where you have to go around, watching these dragon eggs spew their Scarlet Rot out their fallopian tubes, until we reach the town of Celia. And from here we can face the sorcerers to walk our way up to grab a golden seed. This took three entire hours. We can't do much else in the town of Celia, since in order to activate these flames to unlock the blue gate, we need to climb up a ladder. And we can't do that this run, now can we? Next up, I would usually venture to the northern part of Kaelid. But as you can see here in this clip, the only way for me to access this part of Kaelid would be to make this jump. And I definitely can't do that while only walking. So next up is making a journey from the Third Church of America, yet again, up this mountain from earlier where we have to fight the rolling troll and succeed. Then make our way past Summon Water Village and across this bridge where we have to fight yet another crazy pumpkin guy. Luckily with our shield capabilities and careful timing, he wasn't all too bad. Now from here, we can walk to the place of overpopulated trolls and make them break this statue to grab some smithing stones. Then we can walk our way to Alexander the Iron Fist, and usually we would work to complete his questline since it gives us a very overpowered talisman, but during one part of the quest, I have to throw an oil pot at him, which would stop my walking animation, and as we know, I can't really do that. So I fucking murdered him. And with that, he drops the Warrior Jar Shard, which we can equip to boost the attacks of our skills. Nothing like equipping our enemy's remains. This talisman increases our damage output from 106 to about 117. Now I made my way to the Stormhill Shack, which is where you can speak to Rodrika and grab this golden seed nearby. We can then journey around to Stormvale Castle along this secret passage to Liurnia of the Lakes, or we can grab a sacred tear at this church and spend a bit of time farming these skeleton dudes for the scythe they wield. I then teleported back to the Saint Bridge with the Pumpkinhead dude from earlier to farm these soldiers on top of this cliff for a soldier's crossbow. Got it on my first try actually, so not much farming there. Which is the only bow we can obtain with our current stats. Now from here I teleported to the Aguiles Lake South which is the grace right next to the Bridge of Sacrifice, you know, the one we couldn't get into before, and made my way to this little platform where I used the crossbow we just got and the bolts that randomly dropped from killing Godric soldiers to attempt to shoot down this bastard who shoots the explosive bolts at us. And did you know how difficult it was to shoot the crossbow while moving simultaneously with the stick and then trying to hit this pixel-perfect shot? Very difficult and it took me 27 arrows to knock him off his little platform. And that still wasn't enough, since even if you push him off, he just gets right back on. So it took a few more arrows. And with that done, we now have access to the Weeping Peninsula, which was essential for what I was working towards. 
Now we could speak to Irina to progress her questline, which if we do correctly, we can get an Ash of War called Spinning Strikes, which is like Wild Strikes and the fact that we can do this weird orangutan walk, and I plan on putting Spinning Strikes on the scythe weapon we got earlier. But after hopping on another character, I realized the only way to progress this questline would be to climb up these ladders. So basically I wasted my time, and I even spent a few hours shooting arrows at this tower in order to try to find out if it was possible to shoot down the NPC that drops the spinning strikes. But nope, it seems impossible, so we'll just have to deal with the fact that we can't use spinning strikes. After that disappointing news, I left Irina and went to go collect the two sacred tears in the Weeping Peninsula. The one by all the frenzy rats was first, and then I got the one right next to the walking mausoleum. I also made sure to grab the golden seed here too. After this, I went to go grab all the upgrades in the Liernia of the Lakes. But if you thought Liernia Lakes was massive before, try walking through it. It's a time-consuming mess that makes you want to move back to the nutsack. The distance between these sites of graces makes even the slightest mistake a treachery in disguise. But I did eventually get to the Golden Seed at the Academy Gate Town, and the Glintstone Key near the Temple Quarters, where I was sentenced to become a charred popsicle by Smarag himself. I used this key to enter the Academy, where if we walk a little bit past this blue seal, towards this golden seed in the background, there's a mandatory jump, which, while walking, sends us straight to Limbo. That scream represents my mental state. So yeah, we can't get that golden seed. So instead, I headed to the Bellum Church, which is the church right next to the Dectus Medallion Lift, to grab a sacred tear. Can't do much else from here, since not only is the entrance to the Dectus Medallion Lift, filled with filthy tarnished scum, but it's also impossible for us to use the lift since in order to grab one of the medallion pieces, we need to access the northern part of Kaelid. And even if we had access, we would have to climb this ladder, which makes this way to Altus Plateau impossible. So I headed on a journey from the Temple Quarters, past the Four Belfries, to the Testu's Rise, then to the King's Realm Ruins, where I met the blacksmith for the start of this run, since I don't have access to the Round Table Hold at the moment. I then tried to make it to the Caria Manor, but as you can suspect, being pelted with arrows without break makes walking to the front door a little strenuous. I need so much more health. I even bought a health medallion to see if it would help. And yeah, it didn't. So, I gave up and made my way back to the Test to Rise, where I could proceed in shooting down these balloons for some runes then making my way past these poisonous egg sacs, which might I say is harder to deal with than a smallpox epidemic, and then grabbing the last golden seed we can obtain at the end of this cavern. This cavern is another way we can access Altus Plateau, but just like the Dectus Medallion, we need to climb a ladder in order to proceed with the route, so this way is a no-go as well. And now with every golden seed and sacred tier collected possible, that alone took me 15 hours to do, we are still extremely underleveled and under-equipped for everything the game will throw at us. So we still need a few items before we decide to rest out our first mandatory Site of Grace. First off, I need to collect this Site of Grace in Volcano Manor, because it'll give me access to the only realistic route to Altus Plateau. So that means I have to head through the hell that is Rhea Lucaria's Academy. No! Not the co-op! Uh. Our first opponent are these sorcerers blocking us from getting the grace. If we time it right, which I failed to do a few times, I hate this goddamn game. We can kill these two sorcerers blocking the door with our crossbow. Then we can just spam arrows at the sorcerer inside since his spells can't reach us for some reason. Then we have to individually take down these handymen. Trust me, I learned my lesson with this one. No! I should have just shot him before we can obtain the Sight of Grace. From the Sight of Grace, we have to deal with the fact that we are slower than paint drying, and are easily caught by the Soul Snatcher's 9000. But with careful enough maneuvering, I can get past a majority of this area. No! 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 No, it's the big one! No! <laughs> and up this elevator to the next Sight of Grace. Now from here is where you can hop on the backside of this elevator thing, and force ourselves to shatter our knees, before slowly being abducted. With this, we are now in Volcano Manor, and in order to grab this grace, we need to head through an army of bats, and many pitfalls. I like to point out that on one of these falls, we do have to cheat a little bit and swing our axe down in order to clear the path. I tried finding other methods to clear this while still maintaining my walking animation, but there are none as far as I know. Not even exploding yourself.
Once on this platform, we can just barely make it to the next one, and now we have to spend a bit of time shooting down these two enemies who I ran out of arrows with. So I ended up having to get my hands dirty. And just like that, we got the side of grace that can take us to the Altus Plateau. All we need to do is go through this section of lava with these slugs that do a ton of damage, then fall down this pit and fight the two abductor virgins. But as you can tell, I'm quite at a disadvantage here with such a low vitality stat. So we're gonna have to come back here at a later time. Now I'm looking for a weapon that we can use that is much better than our axe I've been sticking with. That weapon is called the Great Omen Killer, and it can drop from this demon mask guy at Volcano Manor. So back to getting sucked into a sarcophagus we go. And now at Volcano Manor, we have the ability to drop down this side here to enter areas we probably shouldn't, and maneuver our way to the elevator, which is right next to another elevator that leads us to an unavoidable enemy. Or so you think. You see, if we shoot arrows at this little column thing here, he gets distracted and we can just slowly make our way behind him. <laughs> Stupid. Now from here, we can pull this lever and make our way to this snake thing, which is super easy to deal with since all we have to do is shoot him down from a distance. And for some reason, he doesn't chase us. Now we need to stand on top of these rooftops and shoot down the omen killer, which took way too long, and just so you know, I did buy a shit ton of bolts before fighting this guy, and farmed up some animals for bone bolts, just in case. Which I'm glad I did, because I almost used all of them. Got him! Finally! Once we grab the Great Omen Killer, we have to die, and go back to the Grace just like before. Now the Omen Killer requires 23 strength and 12 dex. And how Elden Ring works, if we meet the dex requirement, it would allow us to two-hand the weapon. We currently have 9 dex. So I teleported to the 4th Church of America, where I entered the Weeping Everjail to fight the ancient hero of Zamor. This guy can kill me very quickly. But because we have such a high poise, I was able to circle around him while doing a decent amount of damage, and at some point even stunning him, which allowed me to take him down within a few tries. Come on, yes, yes, yes! With him dead, we get Radagon Scar Seal, which is the off-brand version of Radagon Sword Seal, and gives us plus three to our decks and other stats. And with that, we're now able to two-hand the Omen Killer. And besides the fact that it comes equipped with Wild Strikes, it also applies Bleed, which is the only thing that can save this run from eternal damnation. And it's also the reason I chose this weapon. Now we need to upgrade the shit out of this thing before we can start breaking Demigod's skulls. With what we currently have, I got it to plus 5, which means we need 6 Smithing Stone 2s, which I got from the brawl between wolves and bears, a spot in the Weeping Peninsula, an area in the Castle Morn, and then near all these lobsters in Liurnia. PSA, don't ever fuck with the European lobsters. God damn. With that, we have a plus six, and now we need 12 smithing stone threes to get it to a plus nine. We can get eight at the Rhea Lucaria's crystal tunnel. You know, the cave with the guys who drill harder than Rockefeller. God damn it. We can then get three at a gazebo with this surprise lobster and it was sure as hell a surprise. Then we could get one more next to the Academy Gateway near this flame tattooist. And trust me, this guy can blow. <laughs> With that, we now have a plus nine, and we need 11 Smithing Stone 4s to get a plus 12. There are eight inside Gale Tunnel, but we can't get into Gale Tunnel because it's impossible to go down without falling to our death. So instead, there are two we can acquire at Shifa River. We can also get two inside of Rhea Lucaria's area along with this scroll. I should also mention I acquired the Academy Scroll a while back when I was farming for the scythe. We can get another smithing stone inside the Lakeside Cave near Laskiar Ruins. We can get one from the Forsaken Ruins in Kaelid. We can get three inside of the Ionia Lake on this chair guy. Thank you very much, chairman. We can get one near this artist shack in Liurnia. And the last smithing stone can be acquired if we farm these miners outside of the Gale Tunnel. But after dying so many times, I nearly doubled my runes. I chose to just stick with a plus 11. Since whether or not it's a plus 11 or a plus 12 doesn't matter all too much, since Margit can still dom me out of existence. I hate this boss. I hate this boss. My original plan was to kill Margit for the talisman pouch and hopefully have enough health to deal with the abductor virgins. But after trying for a bit, I realized that that's not gonna happen. Since all we can do is walk, we're stuck tanking and blocking damage for a majority of the fight. And without a lengthy health pool to back me up or more than three crimson tears, we will never be able to beat this bitch of a boss. <laughs> Put these bullets in business around. 
So with that said, we now need to level up. And remember, I can only level up three times this entire run, so let's get to rune farming. A perfect place to gather a shit ton of runes is Kaelid, specifically the northern part. Now I know I said I couldn't get here by just walking, but I lied. Technically, I can use this teleporter thing which would teleport me to the northern part of Kaelid. The reason I didn't use this before and said I wouldn't use it was because I thought it was possible to beat the game without using them. But I realized we need to kill two demigods in order to proceed with laying Del Royal Capital. The demigods I had planned was Godric the Grafted and Renala, Queen of the Full Moon, which would easily give me access to the capital. But I missed something. The only possible way to get to the Ranala boss fight is to drop on this buttress and jump on this column. Jump on this column. And yeah, I can't jump in a walk-only run, so the only other demigods we have access to is Rykard and Radon. And if you don't know, the only way to access those guys is to use a teleporter. So because teleporters are mandatory for completing this run, I can use this teleporter to go to the Northern Kaelid to go rune farm. If you don't like this logic, complain. Everything's fun in games till you have a gun pointed at your head. Before we head to Northern Kaelid though, I need one necessary item that'll increase my runes by 30%. And if you're thinking about the Golden Scarab, you're wrong. I can't get to that one. I just die. However, if you're thinking about going to the cave where Patches is and buying the three gold pickled foul foot, you'd be very much correct. While I was here, I also grabbed a few spells that I could purchase because of these scrolls I got earlier. Now from Northern Kaelid, we have access to the Bestial Sanctum. And from here, we can travel all the way down to the Ferrum Great Bridge Site of Grace. And now I need to kill this dragon in order to get across this bridge. But this guy has 2,200 health. And I get one-shotted. What? How is that even possible? So I needed a plan. And the plan I came up with was to spend oh four entire dickin' hours to attempt to get this guy to glitch on this tree. Are you joking me? Ah! For those who don't know, if you get him stuck in this animation right here... Now you do it! Now? Why? Why? It will kill him after 30 seconds, since in the code somewhere, if you're suspended in the air long enough, the game will just kill you. And that applies to bosses as well. But who knew how difficult this would be? No! 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 So after four hours, I gave the fuck up. No! And decided my time would be better spent gathering butterflies in the Ionia Swamp. It was very relaxing. I used these butterflies to make a shit ton of scarlet rot bolts and arrows. I then used all my walking strength to lure this guy onto this tree, where I can just sit here and scarlet rot him multiple times until he dies. Yes! Finally! I of course used the gold pickled foot before he died and gained over 104,000 runes. Worth it. So worth it. Now we have access to cross this bridge and to the next side of Grace. And from here we need to walk past a ton of dragons. And to the Fort Faroth side of Grace, where I took it upon myself to take a pet dragon over to this side of Grace. Oh, you're so cute and then brutally murder it with hundreds of small arrow cuts. From this side of grace, we can go over to this senile dragon, who can't even defend itself, and proceed to viciously delete her health bar until her life support runs out, granting us around 90,000 runes. What should we do with these runes? Oh right, level up. But wait, let's see if we can get even more runes by shooting down this putrid avatar from a dis- Never mind, let's just level up. This side of grace is mandatory by definition since we need the maiden to finish the game. Being maidenless can only get us so far. With this precious opportunity to take a walking break after walking for so long, we can transfer all the golden seeds we've been collecting and sacred tears. Our end result was nine tears, three of which I'll turn into a cerulean tier. Leveling up wise, we can put our health to 37. This is because the Radagon Scar Seal we have gives us the other three points to make 40 vigor. We can also use the Scar Seal's effects to leave our strength at 20, since our Great Omen Killer requires 23. We also need intelligence at 16, use specific sorceries, and that's it for leveling. Now we can use this opportunity to equip Glintstone Stars and Great Glintstone Shard. One of these is absolute garbage, and it rhymes with Glintstone Stars. But Great Glintstone Shard is actually pretty helpful for killing enemies from afar. And we can also equip our wondrous physic with some tears, making us as overpowered as we could possibly be at this point in the walking only run. 
Now we need to go and kill Margit. But oh my god, we are overpowered and he's dead. I thought he'd take more work. And with killing him, we gain the talisman pouch. And now we have to go through the hell that is Stormvale fucking castle. First off, I can't go the sneaky way around the castle because I can't jump on this ledge. So I have to get this guy to open the gates and have an army rain bolts on me like if this is some sort of Greek legend. So I had to improvise and spend many minutes attempting to shoot the archers' heads. Because if you headshot them, they'll stop shooting bolts at you. This made this part far easier. But it took a little too long to shoot these guys every time I died. So I went on the right side and killed this guard dog which would give me an easier grace to spawn at so I don't have to continuously shoot down these guys' heads. This next part is the worst part of this godforsaken place, and it was based on pure dumb luck. Basically, there are these two bomb guys that start pelting bombs at you, which can be taken down with a few glintstone shards. But they're not the hard part. The hard part is these two ballistas waiting to shoot me with explosive rounds. And even though I have 20 fucking thousand poise, they somehow managed to throw me around like Sabrina Williams' tennis racket or toss me around like an inmate's asshole, whichever analogy you prefer. Either way, I died too many times. But when I did finally get through this hellscape, I had to deal with an army of crossbowmen and this beast guy. It was right there! As you can tell, I was having a lot of fun doing this. Eventually, however, I did make it all the way to the next side of Grace, and to Godric's boss gate. And this fight ended so quickly quicker than Margit, especially because of the effects of bleed damage. And besides the one time I got grabbed... Wow, this shit is easy. Never mind, I was lying. Please, let go! Let go of me! I took almost no damage this fight. Goodbye, Godric the Grafted. Next demigod we're going after is General Radon, and he is a little just a little too hard for us right now. So we need to increase our weapon damage by as much as possible before fighting him again. So it's time to adventure to Alta's Plateau, which means we have to fight the Abductor Virgins. I have never raged so much in my life than when fighting these Iron Maidens. No! No! And after repeatedly dying four fucking thousand times, I went to go buy prawns from this robber as any sane person would do after being manhandled several thousand times. These prawns do have a purpose though, and they give me 15% damage negation for 30 seconds, which was exactly enough time for me to destroy this boss. Come on, die, 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 yes, yes, I can't speak that loud, but yes. And it's future of manscaping. Speaking of manscaping, sponsor me. If you want to know how I defeated this boss, it was honestly pattern recognition, and taking every hit in hopes you don't die before the other virgin gets to you. With them dead, we now have access to Alta's Plateau. It only took 40 hours of continuous walking. Now let's get to getting smithing stones to upgrade our weapon. First, we need that smithing stone 4, which we couldn't get before, which means we need a farm again, but luckily for me, I got it on my first try. And now we have a plus 12. To get from a plus 12 to a plus 15, we need 12 smithing stone 5s, 5 of which we can get from the Altus Tunnel after walking for a solid 20 minutes. We can then get the remaining amount from the old Altus Tunnel, which I had to trace back to because I didn't have enough stone sword keys the first time. Are you joking me? I walked all the way here! And with that, we have a plus 16, since we had two smithing stone 6s already in our inventory. Now we need 10 in order to get to a plus 18. First off, we have a very long walk ahead of us that slowly takes us to a lava pool with our good old pal, Magma Worm. Oh, my bad, I meant Magma Wire. <laughs> Funny, I almost mispronounced it. This guy was actually pretty tough since there was no way of getting around him, since the Wyrm happened to be born with some sort of Hawk Vision. And besides the massive amount of damage he does to me with his lava alone, he doesn't take that much damage from me. How I managed to kill this Wyrm was by shooting glintstone shards at him till he got stunned, and then finishing him off with an ora ora ora! After I forced this rune bear near Hermit Village to break this statue, which gives us three smithing stone sixes. Now there's no more smithing stone sixes in this area, but since we're here we can go ahead and kill demi-human queen Maggie, since when she dies she drops a memory stone, which we need for the next time we rest at a site of grace. Speaking of memory stones, I killed Red Wolf of Radagon earlier during my rage fest with the Abductor Virgins. No! Since he also drops a memory stone. These two memory stones are the only two we can get at the moment, since a majority of them are blocked off by ladders. 
While we are nearby, I can also talk to this crystal dude who gives us the most overpowered sorcery in the entire game. No, I'm not allowed to use it, since it forces me to stop in place, canceling out my walking animation. But it does progress Stonehead's questline, which we need to do for a certain spell. After talking to her, we need to head to Celia's hideaway, which we can get to by dropping off this edge here near Fort Farah. While we are here, we need to go find one of Stonehead's sorcerer friends, who is totally not about to die, while giving us a legendary spell. This legendary spell is called Stars of Ruin, and it is very overpowered. And yes, I can actually use this one, at least when I get 43 intelligence. So for right now, it goes inside my endless inventory. Now back on the Smithing Stone 6 grind, we have to get past this huge highway junction. If we try to go the normal way, we end up dying to these royal knights. Luckily for us, we can go around the side here, near the Falling Star Beast. Quick note, if we kill the Falling Star Beast here, we get 5 Smithing Stone 6, but after dying a few too many times to this boss, God damn it, I decided to just wait till we level up. And now we have to deal with the two tree sentinels that are blocking our path. Since you know, one's not enough. If we try to sneak past them, we die. So the best way I found to split them up was to stay on this upper ledge here, which they can't come up unless you decide to move over to the other side, which then we can bring one of them up and fight them one on one. Now I have a video where I fought this guy with my bare fist and a shield, so this wasn't much of a challenge. Yeah! With both of them dead, we can enter this gateway to the outer wall side of Grace and then make our way to a sealed tunnel where we can find this statue that when broken gives us three smithing stone sixes. Last two we can get is from a statue near the hero's grave. Without killing the falling star beast, that's the most smithing stone six we can get before entering the capital, giving us a plus 17, which is perfect for dominating Radon. Now as to how I get to the Radon boss, it's quite simple, since no matter how hard I try, I can't make my way inside of Redmain Castle. So what we can do is go from the impassable main bridge, and impassable it is, all the way to the ledge right here, where we can fall off and kill ourselves. Finally. And by doing this, we gain access to the Stake of America, which just happens to be right next to the Radon boss fight. Now in case you are wondering, no I can't enter Redmain Castle from this point since the festival hasn't started yet, but if I wanted to, I could just sit here and listen to gospel music all day. But we have a crazed Scarlet Rotted Maniac to kill, in the name of Radon. Now Radon is very, very difficult, even with our upgraded weapon. It's mainly due to the fact that at the start of the fight, we have to spend two healing tiers tanking these arrows he chucks at us. No! No! I am alive! And once we get him to second phase, we have to get hit by this kamikaze attack, which leaves us with very little health. So just like the Abductor Virgins, we can use damage negation items to help counter this. Sadly, our Jailer friend has moved from the Boil Prawn Shack, which means we have to spend a decent minute walking through Alta's Plateau to this Merchant Shack, all the way to this little pond where he now sells boiled crabs, which gives us a 20% damage negation for 60 seconds. And I bought 50 of them, so let's hope that's enough. And as you can see, It wasn't. While I still had a decent amount of boiled crabs, I just kept dying. So I had to pull out my trump card, which is the Golden Great Shield. Now to get this shield, I did have to grind this soldier near Artist Shack for a bit, but it was so very worth it. First of all, I do not have enough strength to hold this shield, which isn't a bad thing since as you can see here when he starts pelting arrows at me, I can use the fact that I don't meet the strength requirement to shield break myself, which I'm allowing for this challenge by the way. Another reason this shield is godly is because of this right here. Usually I'd end up dying or losing a shit ton of health from this arrow barrage. But if we two hand this shield, we now meet the strength requirement to wield it, allowing us to take almost no damage when walking our way to Radon. <laughs> I am a barrier! Now when it comes to actually fighting Radon, it was much better to not use a shield at all, since all his attacks end up shield breaking us if we hold our shield up the entire time. 
it's much better to just yellow it and start swinging at this man's lack of genitals. Sadly, Leonard does get caught up in the crossfire. Love you, Leonard. Once we get him low enough, he does this attack here, which ends up killing me 50% of the time. But if I do end up surviving this attack, I just spam my attack at him, hoping for bleed to proc before he decides to enter the space-time continuum. The kamikaze attack he does can kill us if we're at low health. Are you joking me? What? I thought I had enough health! But since we decided to put so many levels into Vigor, we can manage to survive this attack. Now his second phase here is a load of bullshit, mixed with more bullshit. God damn it. Seriously, I spent way too long fighting this guy. No! Only to get lucky on one of my attempts. Come on! Die! Yes! And with that, we are two demigods down and 55 hours into the game. Jesus Christ. And of course, what follows after completing the demigods we need is going on another golden seed run. Firstly, I need to go grab a sacred tier I missed near the Celia hideaway. I can grab a golden seed at the Rhea Lucaria's area near this place we can't get into. I can grab a golden seed right near the Erdtree Gazing Hill site of Grace. I can grab a golden seed near the Altus Highway Junction. We can grab another golden seed towards the path to Volcano Manor. We can grab a sacred tier at the Second Church America near all the Death Lurkers. And from there, we can go head to this Mist Forest where we can grab yet another golden seed. And if we travel a little further past these windmill people, we can get another golden seed. And after this point, we can walk all the way near this lightning dragon boss fight to grab a sacred tier at the Stormcaller Church. Next up is all the golden seeds past the two tree sentinels we fought. First two we can get is right next to the outer wall phantom tree side of grace. We can go from this side of grace to face a tree spirit, which honestly I just got extremely lucky on. Nothing to comment on here. From here we can go to the next nearby side of grace to grab two more golden seeds. We have one golden seed we can get at Stormdale Castle in disguise of a tree spirit, which was much easier than the first one. Last golden seed we can get is at Caria Manor, which killed us last time, but with six crimson tears and 40 vigor, we have just enough to get us to the front door, which then leads us past these hands. Little hands you there, huh? <laughs> that was not funny. And if we go in far enough, we can grab this last golden seed. Since we're at Carrion Manor, I decided to deal with Loretta, which is a she, not a he. I apologize for my last video, Loretta. Now die! The reason I killed Loretta is so that I can start this badass bitch Ronnie's questline, which leads us to speak with Celevis, who we'll need to converse with to get a talisman. Now with all that done, I need to go kill the Erdtree Avatar in the Weeping Peninsula for the Opaline Bubble Tier, which significantly negates one hit worth of damage. With everything collected, it's time to progress the game and face the Draconic Tree Sentinel. God damn it. And my god, what a challenge this is going to be. First off, this guy hits like a small Ford Transit Connect. God damn. Second thing is the fact that this guy can stun us with the majority of his attacks. Copernicus. And I can't use Scarlet Rot since I ran out of butterflies to collect. And the only thing left in the swamp is a Wild O'Neill, which I've taken care of. Yes! Without a cheesy way of taking care of this guy, the only thing we can do is try to increase our damage negation as much as possible. One way to do this is to go to the Saint's Grave where we can manage our way through these low-life enemies and make our way to grab the Dragon Crest Shield Talisman. When equipped, this talisman boosts our damage negation by 13%, and when used with the Boiled Crab, we can become quite the tank. Luckily for us on one of my attempts, he decided to use the only attack that is possible for us to avoid, which ended up giving me just enough time to take him down. Come on, come on! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Please don't kill me, please don't kill me! Yes, yes, yes! Yes! I am king! From here, we can make our way to the side of Grace, and as you can see here, we're blocked out of the capital. I didn't know if having access to the round table hold was necessary or not, but it looks like it is, which means we have to rest at another side of Grace. Now, although this one is mandatory, I told you guys I'm only gonna level up three times, and this will not be one of those times, which is going to make Landell so much more difficult than it needs to be. But whatever, I'll do anything for that subscription. Subscribe. Now that we have access to the round table hold, we can purchase flame fortification, which I plan on using against the flame giant, but we will see how that goes. And since we're on the topic of incantations, I need to grab a few of them before I continue on with the round table hold. 
First one I can get is the Blood Flame Blade. This one will increase our bleed damage and cause fire damage at the same time. Next one is Poison Ornament, which as you can guess, applies poison on our weapon. While I was out, I also decided to grab the Scholar's Shield Sorcery, which can increase shield's damage negation. With these two incantation and one sorcery, we can get back to the Round Table Hold, where we can sell all our shit we've been gathering up, level up our staff, buy a Memory Stone, and most importantly, talk with the Two Fingers. The Two Fingers gives us a Talisman Pouch and the ability to buy Radon's Armor, Drip Check, and the ability to enter Lindell Royal Capital. Funny thing I noticed is that our chest is actually so big, the cape takes up half of the screen. In Dell, we can go from the East Ramport side of Grace all the way to the Avenue Balcony. From the Avenue Balcony, we can go underneath the Dragon and mingle our way to the Lower Church, where we can grab Lionel's gear. Another Drip Check. To progress, we need to make our way to this Dragon's Wing, where I spent nearly 40 minutes getting past this small little hump right here. Now from here we can drop down, and sadly climb this mandatory ladder. Trust me, there's no way around this, I tried. From here we can go and meet with the first Elden Lord, or as I like to call him, Mr. Stompy. He wasn't all too bad, ah, Godfrey! All I did was tank his damage and heal up between attacks, same thing I've been doing. With him down we can get our last talisman pouch, and now we can make our way to Morgoth, the Omen King, and a king he is. Just like what we did for the Draconic Tree Sentinel, we're gonna do the same thing for Morgoth, since we can't get past his second phase like this. So we need to upgrade. First off, we can upgrade our weapon by hunting down this Scarab near Stormvale Castle, and then equipping our weapon with Wild Strikes, which gives us the option to change it to a heavy enchantment. From walking through Lane Dell, we got enough Smithing Stone 6 to finally upgrade our weapon to plus 18. Now to get to plus 21, we need 12 Smithing Stone 7s. We can grab two of those Smithing Stone 7s by maneuvering our way to this clump of white blood cells. We can then get five inside the subterranean shunning grounds. If you're wondering how I got in this place, I kinda just slipped right in. There's one next to this remnant that I killed, and four Smithing Stone 7s next to these very tanky lobsters. With all that we've grabbed, we can get a plus 20 omen killer. We're almost to a plus 25. I then went to grab a talisman within the royal capital called the Ritual Shield Talisman, which increases our defense when our HP is at maximum. With all that we have, we are now prepared to kill Morgoth. Now there is a bit of an RNG that comes into this fight with Morgoth, since if we're unlucky during his phase transition, he can combo the shit out of me. God damn it! My only strat in this fight is to heal as he hits me, since a majority of his attacks can't stun me. And as you can expect, after a few tries, I got him to bleed during his second phase transition, which ended up being the reason I killed him. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Yes! Yes! Now we need to burn the Erd Tree, which means we need the Roid Talisman, making this grace mandatory. While I rested my legs from a long journey, I made sure to exchange all my Flask, Sacred Tears, Wondrous Physic, and made sure to equip all the sorceries and incantations I needed that I got along the way. In terms of leveling up, I put a majority of my stats into Strength, Vigor, and Intelligence. The Strength is so that I can equip the Golden Shield, the Vigor is self-explanatory, and the Intelligence is so that I can eventually use Star of Ruins, which costs 43 Intelligence. Now with that, we're off to the Mountain of Giants. What a great start! Through the mountaintops of giants, we have many obstacles of disarray that I did not plan for. First off was this jump right here, which is kind of impossible for us to go across. So I need to cheat a bit and use my horse to jump over. I'm gonna be honest, we made it pretty far without jumping even once. But let's see how far we can get without jumping twice. Apparently not very far. Again, this is mandatory, so I don't really count it as cheating per se, but you're free to use your First Amendment rights. The freedom to shut the fuck up. After crossing the beautiful Wall of China, and walking all the way to the Freezing Lake, we are faced with quite a heavy obstacle in the name of Borealis, the Freezing Fog. This guy is nearly impossible for us to kill. Not only does his attacks hurt like hell, but he has the tendency to just shower us in frostbite, killing us almost instantly. Every time, I die right away. So let's do this upgrading thing again. First off, we can grab three Smithing Stone 7s in the statue right next to the Grace. Next, we need to head to the Castle Soul in order to grab a medallion piece, which means going through this castle, grabbing this Grace, and then trying to fight Commander Nile. 
Usually this guy is really hard, but for the second time now in a challenge run, I have somehow managed to make him look very easy. Fortunately for us, Nile stands still a lot, which gives us the opportunity to unleash the unlimited karate chops. Yes! First try. Seriously, I can't write this shit. With him dead, we can grab half of the medallion piece we need, and then make our way through the village of Albanarix to grab the other half. This piece reveals to us a secret area, which is hard to navigate in because of all the goddamn snow. It is called the Concentrated Snowfield, so I guess that makes sense. In this area, we can grab three more plus sevens and a plus eight, which allows us to upgrade our weapon to a plus 22. While we're here, we can also grab a talisman, which increases our robustness, or the stat that correlates to Frostbite. And with all this, we still die to Borealis. However, I made sure to equip a spell called Scholar's Shield, which increases our damage negation for our shield. And on top of that, if we add our increased robustness, we can safely and slowly make our way to the next side of Grace. Next up, we have to face the Fire Giant for 10 fucking hours. No, I am not kidding. I'll say it again. This took way no! too no! long. No! 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 But here I am to explain it. So at first, I thought this boss wouldn't be too hard of a challenge, since besides a large health bar, he's one huge-ass target. I failed to realize just how much distance control this is the stupidest thing I have ever thought this guy can do. Anytime I got close to him, he would squish me like a Goomba, or proceed to roll away like a Dark Souls character. Oh wait, that's this game. With melee alone, I couldn't even get him to his second phase. I hate this boss. I can barely even get him past his initial first phase. And I'm dead. So here's the plan. Yes, a heavy crossbow and serpent arrows, which we can buy from this merchant in the Dragon Barrow. These arrows apply poison and poison at this stage is absolute dog shit and it didn't work. So I revamped this strategy by leveling up the heavy crossbow to a plus 18. Then after that, I went to go grab meteor bolts from this merchant in Rey Lucaria's Academy. Then I had to travel from the concentrated snowfield all the way to the teleporter that takes me to the Lord of Blood's territory. If we can make our way through all this cancer, then we can gain access to the merchant who sells bird bolts. Now both these arrows are very effective against the boss. Since the bird bolts cause bleed and the meteor arrows apply magic damage, speaking of magic damage, this boss is weak to it, so along with decking ourselves with magic arrows, I also grab the wet blade, which allows me to change the attribute of my omen killer to magic. Now if you notice, my armor set's a bit different than what it normally looks like. And that's because I spent 30 minutes at the Guardian's Garrison farming these fat guys. The reason being is because this armor has the highest amount of fire damage negation, which my god, we will need for this second phase. Speaking more on fire damage negation, I also got the plus two flame drake talisman from the Beastmen boss in Kaelid. Another talisman I grabbed for this boss was the plus one variant of the Viridian Amber talisman so that I can have more stamina when blocking this boss's huge ass attacks. And with all of this, this was still not easy, Come on, come on, come on, come on, please! At all. No! No! While first phase was made much simpler, since all I had to do was lure him in this little cavern and then shoot him down with bird arrows for 10 minutes, second phase was the ninth level of hell. After countless of attempts, No! I held the button! I developed the strategy of peekaboo. Since once second phase starts, he does this attack, which if we get close to, leads us to being a bit over well done. However, if we instead move near the trees and proceed to hide behind them while I try to simultaneously shoot him with bleed bolts, we are playing peekaboo. And I have many years of peekaboo experience with the IRS. Yes! 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 10 hours! Ah! Now 90 hours in, we can make our way to the Forge of Giants. We do have to use our horse for a brief moment here, since there's no other way to walk up there. Now at this side of grace, we can level up. But before we do that, I made sure to grab as many runes as possible, or around 8 million. And yes, that took quite a bit. 
Then we need to grab all the remaining golden seeds that we needed, along with all the remaining sacred tears. I also grabbed Divine Fortification from this Scarab in the Weeping Peninsula, and Crimson Spill Crystal Tear by killing Wormface in Alta's Plateau. Now with all this, we are ready to level up. As to what I'm going to level up? Well, the answer is not intelligence. Since after testing Star of Ruins for a bit, I realize how useless this spell is late game. So getting 43 intelligence has been cancelled. And instead, we're going to put all those points into Vigor. A lot of Vigor. With 99 points of Vigor, we get 2,100 health. Which may not seem like a lot, but trust me, it will. The rest of the levels I put mostly into Endurance. The spells I'll be equipping is Scholar Shield for the extra damage negation, Magic Negation for Malekith, Divine Negation for Radagon, Blood Flame to increase my blood buildup, and because Radagon is weak to fire, I also have Poison Ornament as a filler spell just in case I need it. With all of this, we can now commit a cardinal sin of touching a female's hand before marriage, which transports us to Pharaoh Missoula. And with 99 health, we can get through Pharaoh Missoula fairly easily, until we're eventually at the Godskin Duo. The Godskin Duo isn't that bad this run, unless they both decide to attack me at once. If they don't, it's a pretty easy fight with the Blood Flame Incantation I equipped. Come on, come on, come on, come on! Yeah! Easy! From here, we can make it through the rest of this floating rock. However, we do get to a point where we need to make a jump, since it's impossible to make it up this little foundation without jumping. I'm kind of impressed we made it through all of Faramazula with only jumping once. From here, we can make it all the way to the Great Bridge side of Grace, right where Malekith is. But before we do that, we need not only fight the Draconic Tree Sentinel again, but we need to go grab a few Talismans. First Talisman we need to grab is the Crimson Talisman Plus One, which we can get after going to Volcano Manor again, and making our way back to where we were 20 minutes ago. Then to this Fog Wall, where we can acquire the Crimson Medallion Plus One. This gives us a 7% increase to our max health. Which if we pair it with the Earth Tree Favor that we can get through this Folk Hero's Grave, we can obtain 2,314 health, which we can mix with Morgoth's Great Rune. And because I'm a dumbass, I forgot you have to equip this out of grace, so I had to revert back my save to before I leveled up, just so that I could equip this. Morgoth's Great Rune gives us 25% health, and if we mix that in with the 10% increase that Crimson Spill Crystal Tear gives us, we can get 3,182 health points which nearly takes up my entire screen. I also made sure to get the Dragon Crest Shield plus two, which is somewhere here in Faramazula. And I made sure to get the Spelldrake Talisman to decrease magic negation by 13%. And if you think this is enough to kill Malekith, you are sadly mistaken, since our weapon does almost no damage to him, and he jumps around like a monkey throwing shit. However, if there is one thing Malekith doesn't like, it's Frostbite and Scarlet Rot. One weapon that has the ability to do both is the Rotten Battle Hammer. It has the passive ability to apply Scarlet Rot. And with the Glintstone Wet Blade, we can give it the ability to apply Frost. And if we upgrade the shit out of it, we can apply Frostbite within 5 blows. And Scarlet Rot within 6. If you don't know what Frostbite or Scarlet Rot is, well you're in for a treat. Since Scarlet Rot is a percentage based attack which outshines Poison, and Frostbite is like Bleed, except you can't spam it since it applies a debuff. And if you think that's enough, think again. Since we are still missing one key ingredient to decimate Malekit. And that ingredient is the Eclipse Crest Great Shield, which we can get by walking over to the Black Knife Catacombs and farming this Phantom Soldier. The Great Shield has an extremely high magic damage negation, which is going to help us in trying to block Malekith's projectiles. Now if you have noticed, I haven't spoken about Malekith's first phase, and that's because it's dog shit easy. And the real battle is trying not to die in second phase. That is the main reason I wanted so much health, and a beefy shield. With the health and beefy shield, this becomes a battle of attrition. Luckily for us though, he always does the same attack at the start of the phase, which allows us to apply frostbite on him, and if we're lucky enough, we can get a bit of scholar rod in there. Once Scholar Rod is inflicted, I have to pray to the many Elden Gods that I can outheal his deadly attacks, and then wait for Scholar Rod to finish the job. Yes! Yes! With Malekith dead, we are transported to the Ash City, which has an upgraded Crimson Medallion from our plus one, and then an upgraded Erdtree favor to a plus two. 
which maxes our health out at 3,243. I mean, just look at that health bar. Next boss is Gideon, the All-Knowing. And he's dead. Next up is Godfrey the Elden Lord. Not Godric, I've made that mistake in the past. Now first phase for this boss is pretty easy since we don't get stunned by his multitude of attacks. Thank God for 20,000 poise. But second phase... Oh my. Second phase. Second phase is a tad bit different. Did he die? Yes, he died! And I died! We both died! During this phase, Godfrey loves to get handsy with me and touch me in a lot of places I don't want to be touched. And since I can only walk, I can't move out the way. Rink! Ah! So during this phase, I kind of have to just take it. Oh! I didn't expect to grab! Now if we get him down to half health, we get a huge opportunity to dish out damage. But during the rest of the fight, getting damage off is hard as hell since nearly all of his attacks throw us to the ground. But luckily for us, if we get enough hits in with this rotten hammer, we can apply Frostbite and Scarlet Rod on him. Then we can switch to our Omen Killer, which does more damage, and then annihilate the first Elden Lord. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Yeah! Yeah! We have almost made it to the end of the game while only walking. What an effing journey. But now it's time for us to try to kill two of the hardest bosses in the entire game. The reason being is because Radagon can't get bled, and the Elden Beast can't get anything. Seriously, no status effects work on the Elden Beast, which is what makes this so fucking difficult. In order to get to Elden Beast though, we need to first kill Radagon. Now Radagon wasn't all too bad, <laughs> we died at the same time, <laughs> once I got used to him. It's best if we use the Rotten Hammer, since besides Bleed, he can get both Scarlet Rot and Frostbite, which helps out a lot. Now at the start of the fight, Radagon always does this small walk, and then generally follows it up with some variation of a hammer swing, which is the exact same thing we do if we look at it from Radagon's point of view. So like two men with big hammer in Russia, we brawl it out. During this, I don't heal at all, because after getting his health low enough, he always does this leg stomp, which then leads him to doing this hammer attack. During this transition, we can get off one or two heals, which readies us up for another brawl. We do brawl again, like two men. After he gets to about a third of a health bar, he then initiates his Holy Palm attack, which I figured out I can counter by walking towards him. For perspective, he does three palm attacks. The first two are pretty fast, but the last one not only allows us to heal, but get close enough to him in which the attack doesn't even hit us. And because of that, we can just wild strikes him until he dies. Even though I make it sound easy, it wasn't. He is very random sometimes, which can cause the damage buildup to be a little too much for our big chested character. Now once Radagon is done, we have the Elden Beast to deal with. And if this clip shows you anything... Shoot! Just shoot it! Please! No! It's that this boss is stupid. It is the only required boss in the game that runs away from you every time you get close to it. So it is basically impossible for us to melee this boss. And even when we do melee, it's not like we're doing that much damage. So I needed a plan B, a morning after. And that plan was to reset the whole goddamn game again. Farm up to nearly 12 million runes. Get 50 endurance. Kill all the bosses again. Suffer a little bit. <laughs> then we can go from Shifa River all the way to this pot guy for 20, and then kill these invaders for the Great Jar Arsenal. The reason I needed to do this was because on our last character, we were overloaded due to the substantial amount of weight we gained from the start of the game. Getting our endurance to 50 and then equipping the Great Jar Arsenal gets our equipment load to medium. The reason this matters is because in the fight with the Elden Beast, I was having the hardest time trying to maintain my stamina bar because it recovers slower than post nut clarity. And getting our equipment load to medium grants us much faster stamina recovery. Sadly, this doesn't fix our problem of being unable to do damage because this boss is a baby bag bitch. What can fix this is the crossbow we've been using and Lord Sworn's bolts, which we can get by farming the basic knights at the start of the game. Now with all this, this boss is still hard as shit. Since if we don't get lucky during his phase transition where he summons the Elden Stars, 
and are not within an immediate vicinity, we don't get enough damage in, and eventually, we die. However, if we beat the odds of Elden Beast, we get a run like this. First off, during the start of the phase, I can't do much but shoot at him since he does this holy breath attack which I can't avoid. Now after this, I need to do whatever I can to close the distance between me and him, while simultaneously shooting crossbolts at him. When he does this attack, I need to jiggle jiggle, 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 which helps mitigate the damage loss. The rest of his attacks I block, or take head on, unless it's a golden attack, which if I do perfectly, I can land in about 8 hits. Or it's the slam attack, which allows me to get in 3 hits. That golden attack I mentioned is pure luck. Sometimes I can go the entire run without having him do it once. But on this run, and on this run alone, he did it twice. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Come on, 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 come on. Die, 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 please. Please, come on, I had... Hold it. Come on! Yes! Yes! Walking only! Yes! I did it! 120 hours! Yes! I'll be streaming my next challenge, so if you want to see it, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and it'll tell you when I'm live. Goodbye. Whew. Finally.